We're back with another Directory Opus Tricks and Tips 5 and 5. Let's get started. Tabs. Tabs feel a lot like browser tabs, but a lot of people don't even really know that they're here. Easy enough to create some tab sets of your own by simply dragging folders down to the tab area. These could be uh, similar files like videos or pictures you have scattered around. Makes it very easy. Now we're gonna go to groups and save this tab set or tab group. We'll call it Shane's demo. We'll close all the tabs just to test this guy out. We'll change the location in the lister, their little off screen action, and we will use groups to restore the tabs. And there you go. It's actually pretty easy and there's some clever ways that you can use this in your own workflow. Next up, dated folders. I'm frequently trying to create folders for a given date, usually the day today's date. A very quick trip to new folder and new dated folder will automatically create a folder with the date and time on it. That's actually pretty useful and I bet many of you could find a use for this. However, there's even a more fun way to do the new date folder. That's by selecting some files ahead of time and then selecting the new folder again and go to move to dated folder. Not only does it create the folder for you, but it moves the files in there. Great if you're processing tons of pictures, music and others. Checksums. Checksums are very, very useful to make sure that the file you're downloading is the same as the one that you thought you were downloading by using checksums. If we go in here, you'll see that the MD5 and the SHA1 checksums are claimed to be too large to calculate. So you might use some other tool instead, but you don't have to because Directory Opus has you covered. Even though these files are too big to be quickly uh, checksummed, we can select the files and then go up and force a checksum under the edit tab with calculate MD5 checksums. And you can see here, we've uh, you know maybe sped it up a little bit, but you can see here that the checksums are created. These are great if you wanna ensure files are what they are. Split and join. Well, here we go. Sometimes you wanna archive some stuff off to another location, like say a DVD or a Blu-ray or a CD, and this file's just too big to fit on one. So you could split it up using some sort of a weird backup program, but you can also use Directory Opus to do this. So we're gonna select the file. This is 6.39 gigabytes. We're gonna select split. Now there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. We're just gonna look at a very simple uh, use case. And that would be, I wanna back these up on a standard DVD five. So that's gonna be a maximum of 4.7 gigabytes. And this is available right here as a preset. Now you can also go in here and type what you want. 4.7 maybe is a little bit too big. So I'm gonna make it four gigabytes instead. There we go. And now it's gonna do exactly what you want. Now I sped this up a little bit, but it's gonna split those into multiple files of, of less than four gigabytes. So now you can burn one to each disc and you're all set. Of course, you know, you need to be able to bring that back. So we're gonna delete the original. We're gonna select these two files and we are going to join them. Make sure that they're in the right order or terrible things might happen. And we'll just click okay. And it will rebuild the file of those file parts and we're all good to go. Probably many uses for this, but archiving is probably the number one. And I do like to keep things backed up. Let's clean up after ourselves and move on to the next trick. Breadcrumb trails. Everybody knows about the breadcrumb trail, but maybe you don't know all the things you can do with it. So if I were to dig deep into the file structure here, I'm in where the host file is, which is uh, pretty deep into the Windows folder. Now this is the breadcrumb trail and most people know that if you click on one of these, that you can go back or forward through the folders and you can even go through ones that you're no longer part of the hierarchy, but were previously there. A lot of people don't know these carrots actually work. So if you use the carrot next to the C drive, you will see everything on C. Likewise, if you go to Windows, it'll show you everything in the Windows folder for easy backtracking into another location within the subfolder system. Same thing with System32 and so on and so on. What a lot of people may not know either is that these are considered real folders 
in the breadcrumb trail. What do I mean by that? You can actually manipulate them. By right-clicking them, you can do things like delete them. Now, I wouldn't recommend deleting your System32 folder, but you get the idea. You don't have to backtrack to a certain location to perform a certain operation if that folder happens to exist inside the breadcrumb trail already. It's very, very cool. And the breadcrumb trail also has a historical record as well. If you use the drop down here, you can see all the places that I've been. You may want to clear that out uh, for whatever reasons. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If you right click this folder right icon right here, there is a clear history that will help keep that breadcrumb trail history uh, a little more private. Hey, listen, if you like what we're doing here, please like, subscribe, hit the bell. Of course, leave a comment down below. That'll help us out a lot. I appreciate it. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks so much for watching and take care. We'll see you next time.